my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. So I want to thank you first for all the wonderful wedding wishes that you gave the our wedding anniversary. <laughs> no, we didn't just get married. That was uh, quite a few years ago. <laughs> but we had we had a really great time reading all of them, and it was so fun. We thank you so much. Mwah! Okay, today I have got the library quilt. We are going to put the border on, so that'll be a wrap until it's quilted. And I measure it, and it fits in my dining room. So I'm going to have this one quilted and put binding on and get it up in the dining room to enjoy in there. I think it'll be so pretty. Uh, also, I have a bit about the wave stitch. So we're going to do a little segment on quilting with the wave stitch. And uh, we'll see how much of Summer Starlet we get done. If not, we will sort of, we'll, we'll we have this week and then uh, next week for the Summer Starlet. So we'll just see how much we get done on that. Okay, first let's take a look at, oh, we also hit, wait, wait, wait. We hit 98,000 subscribers. I have got to change the little sign. Hold on. So these are removable. Marie in uh, North Carolina made this for me, my little sign to work up to the 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> Getting milestones is fun. So there's a little um, piece of double-sided tape there. And she made me a little container with all of the numbers in here. So I need the eight now. We, as of writing this, we are at 98,116. So I'll put the eight on here and then we can, so how long do you think it'll take to get 2,000 people to subscribe? It's about probably about three months. I'm going to guess three months two between two and three months. It just depends if you tell your friends, uh, if you tell your guilds, your groups that you're in at Facebook, share my videos. That way more people will come faster, hopefully. And, and let me show you the quilt. So this is the giveaway quilt. It is a log cabin that I did for my friend, Michelle Muska's book. And there you go. There it is. So I think this is an awesome quilt. I really loved making it. I love designing it. It has that great big center square, which was so fun to do. Uh, the back, I'll show you again. I showed you the other, the other day. There we go. It's quilted in a traditional Baptist fan, which I think was just marvelous for a log cabin quilt. And when this goes to its new home, I have a copy of the book for you. <laughs> so, so we won't, you won't enter until we hit just over 100,000. You have to get a little bit over because you know people are gonna unsubscribe, so we can't be having that. So we have to get enough over that it's legit, over that it's legit, and then I'll give that away. <gasps> so exciting, <laughs> so exciting. Wait, 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 stop the presses. <laughs> stop the camera. I have to jump in here with a pumpkin alert, pumpkin alert, pumpkin alert. It turns out that the Jolly Bars are all sold. And I don't know if they'll get more in or not. Uh, I think generally they don't do that, so they're all gone. But, but there's another pattern by Cuck, Cluck Cluck So, Allison and Cluck Cluck So, which is similar to this. You know, not the same, but it's got, you know, rows of pumpkins. So here is a picture of that. And I put a project page up on my I Love to Make Quilts, and it has those patterns, which right now in June, they're still on sale. They were the pattern sale. Her patterns were all on sale for June. So you can get it on sale, the pattern on sale. There is a print pattern and a PDF pattern. Say thank you, you're welcome. Uh, and then I'll link a couple of other fabrics. Now, if you love this fabric that I'm gonna be using, there is a layer cake available. So you can uh, get the layer cake and use it for the cluck cluck sew pumpkin and still sew pumpkins with me because everybody needs to sew pumpkins. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled program. Okay, let's talk about the library quilt. We are on the last. This is the last day for the library quilt so long. We're gonna get the borders on it. And I started already. This is Beautiful Day Fabric by my friend Je uh, Deb Strain. Look how gorgeous this green is. I measured it and it can fit in my dining room uh, where the New York Beauty is hanging. I can, this'll be, this is not quite as wide, so it's perfect. And I'm going to put it in there to enjoy it for a while as soon as it's quilted. It'll go to the spa and have a little treatment there so that I can get it faster than if I'm gonna quilt it. Uh, but I'm gonna do a miter border. So I've already done the top and the bottom. 
And so I'm going to show you that with the other camera and then we're going to go to the other side and talk about getting the second two borders on and then sewing the miter. And I did a video on the miter quarters just recently in the past year, I'm sure it was. <laughs> it's out there. Just put miter corners in the search bar. So let's take a look. So first, because the fabric is directional, I cut these uh, top and bottom pieces so they, ha they had to be pieced a little bit. So there's one seam right there, which from a distance, there you go, it just kind of disappears unless you really know what you're looking for. So then there's a seam on the bottom. But otherwise, those flowers would have ro rotated differently had I done it length of fabric, which is what I'm going to do the sides. I'm going to do the length of fabric. And when you're mitering, you need uh, extra. So I have extra out here so I have something to work with and I did it about seven eight inches extra so that I can uh, have maneuvering room because what we're going to do is this we're going to be sewing that you know that miter and the other border down here now you don't want to sew you stop one fourth from the edge one fourth of the inch from the edge and I back tacked on all four of those and so now We'll go to the other side of the table and work on the side. So before I start, I wanted to pop this picture up here of Harriet's sweet little mini quilt. She took the vase, uh, which, there you go, there's mine. She took the vase and just made it a cute little mini quilt, which is such a great idea. You can do that with any kind of small applique or, you know, of course, your little patchwork blocks. It's just really fun to do. All right, so the border. I'm doing length of fabric. So here is the fabric and I have already, you can see right here, I have already cut out a length for the side borders of this second library quilt. And now I need to, I made them a little bit wider. I'm cutting mine with this green fabric at, I'm doing a four and a half inch wide, but you can see the selvage is still on here because I cut it a little bit wider so that I could have um, less bulk um, to deal with. I cut it about, you know, maybe a half an inch wider. And now I'm going to trim it to four and a half, but I wanna be sure where I'm doing my placement so that it's nice. I don't wanna just chop it off. Now, in reality, I did cut two at a time. I kind of peeked at the backside and went like, yeah, that looks good. But you need to check because your backside, it might have been shifted. So maybe you would be getting like half flowers, depending on how wide your border is. So you really need to look at that. And that's the other reason I'm going to trim each of them individually, not stacked. So I don't want to trim them stacked because then there's a, you know, there's a possibility I'm not getting the images that I really, really want. So see, they're stacked right now. And one is actually a little bit narrower underneath. So I'm going to take these off. And now I could, I mean, I really could just fussy cut it straight as, as it is without folding it or anything. That way I'm getting the true image that I want. So if I'm doing four and a half, then I want to have these bigger flowers kind of right down the middle. I don't want to do four and a half here where they're sort of, you know, chopped away. See that? They're sort of, you're sort of like shoved over to the side. There's, there's no reason I, I made, you know, enough room. So that means I have to do two cuts, which is totally fine. And I'm going to cut them one, one layer at a time and just scooting along. I'm not folding this fabric. See the fabric is one layer. So I am just going to come over here. Now you can do this all mathematically and center and yada, 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 but I am not doing that. So I'm basically getting that, these bigger flowers here, running a down, running a down, running a down. Isn't that, is that a word? Running down the middle of it, the middle of the border. So that it, I get to see the most of this image and I think that looks prettiest for the overall quilt. Okay, so here we go. And then after this side, get it straight. Okay, after that side, now I will flip it over and I actually could do this now. Now I can fold it in half because I have one straight edge that I know is what I want. So I can match up that edge so that they're even. And these are borders 
their length of, of, of the fabric. All right, so here's where I'm going to go. And now I can check it again and say, oh, I'm scooting over a bit more than I want. So I'm going to trim again. So I'll have to trim the other side again. That's okay. I do this sometimes because I'm not sort of measuring the middle, which you could do. You could definitely go and measure your middle and hit it in like great accuracy exactly where you want. But I'm kind of a visual person. I just sort of do it. And at this top edge, I just hold it down real flat so that I'm not getting a Y or a crooked um, place where the fold is. See, it's nice and even. There's the fold. It's nice and straight. But I held down this edge hard, you know, when I was trimming. Okay, so this is one border, and I will trim the other then. But before I do that, here we go. Let's look at attaching it to the quilt. So I've already got the top and the bottom, the shorter top and bottom on here. And I don't need a ruler right now. So I will find the middle and I just find the middle by f folding it in half. You know, doesn't matter right or wrong sides together, but I just want to find where the middle, the middle of this border is. So holding it, folding it in half, that's the middle. And I will just do a pin because if I do a crease personally, I tend to lose that crease as I'm working and I don't really see it that well. Okay. So there we go. So that is my pin mark right there. You can see it. And then for the border, this is the top. This is the top. So look at your fabric. You might feel that, you know, depending on the design, you know, the top might look better. You know, one area might look better as a top than another area. Um, this one I don't, it's like one flower bundle. This flower looks bundle better, looks bundle. This is the top. Maybe that'd be the top for that one. I don't know. So I'm going to go with this is, this is the top exactly how I laid it. Then I will find the middle of this one. And this is how I do it. Really simple. I'm sure people have other ways of doing it, which is you can go out and look on YouTube and find mitered border tutorials to your heart's content. So here's my middle to middle pinned. And then I will go from here. So from here, I will pin outwards until I get down to the intersection. So when I get to the intersection down here, I will, st I will stop at the one fourth in, which is, let me, whoops, let me just scroll you in here. When I sewed this border on, I stopped at both ends, one fourth from the edge. So now when I am doing the side borders and here's the side border with the extra so that I can miter. See, it's got extra so I can do a miter, but I want to come right to that intersection, the same intersection, come right to that point and stop and do a back stitch. So I will put a pin there and I will just carefully sew up to it and then stop and do a back stitch so that I'll be able to make a miter when these are opened. Let's see, can I do that? Oop, let me just take one out. So I will be ending up having a mitered, oh, I can't do it with the pins in it. <laughs> It'd be going open. I just put the pins uh, sideways for a minute so I can show you after I sew up to that point and then back stitch a little bit, I'll be able to flip it over and then we'll be doing a, a, um, a seam that's diagonal to create the mitered corner out like this. So that's what we'll be working on. Then this part will all be gone and that will be how we get, how we get a miter. I'm going to do over to the machine now. I put on a open toe clear foot just so that I could sort of visually get in there. I can feel that ridge. So I am just going to put a needle down and I'm going to do a locking stitch in place. This is the start at that point. And then I'll go forward a bit and then I will go ahead after a while, well, I'll go for a little bit more. And then what I'll do is I'll just put the regular foot back on 
so and then switch to this one again when I get to the other end let me switch let me just show you the back side there is where the stitch is where I started now I could have started one stitch more you know that would have been more perfection and I could go back but that little gap is not really going to cause any problem once I do the miter on there so on this end I am going to get to the pin there and I I felt it in advance I'll take the pin out and I'm going to do just two stitches one and I don't think I'm going to catch it and then I am going to go in reverse back a couple and then let's take a look so this one was much closer than the other one, not much, it's like one stitch, it's that one stitch because you can really see it when it, you're coming towards yourself better than when you're just trying to hit it and go away from yourself. So to miter it, I'm folding this under so that the border is laying this way, that the side border now is laying along the top and bottom which makes this nice fold so you know just it was straight like this and I'm flipping this end under and lining it up and I'm visually creating that miter and then what I'll do is crease it then I will open this and pin it and then we'll sew that line so now they're right sides together and you can test it by opening this up and seeing that you're going to have the miter right there and now I will just sew and I am going to sew from the outer edge to that inside where right where this whoops over here sorry right where the thread is I'm going to sew right to that point there they are together both of them let me stand over here so you can see <gasps> look how cool so the only really difference well of course there's the shelf stuff is different so we have the different things on the shelves like I put something here I chopped the books off so that the top three now were the globe and then I did the same down here but then I also made a skinnier strip here and I added another book on that side so I did a, a little bit of adjusting uh, from from the main one and then my border for the green one will be just a little bit bigger let me get the other camera and show you the miter uh, close up here is the miter close up right there and it looks really really good this fabric was perfect for mitering because it's a little bit more open it's not as dense a print and so it gives that sort of sort of fading off edge line where the four corners are down below while well, the other ones behind the the little thing here but on this print here this is my fabric line and it's very dense the pattern is very dense and so it didn't really need to be mitered there is the seam and you really it just blends I mean that just blends right across you don't even really notice it and so it really depends on your pattern whether it's worth the little bit extra to do the mitering so I think on this one it was on the green one it was so fun now I'm going to show you what I'm going to use for backing I'm going to get the library quilt backing done. Now I have this much extra and let's open it. You know from cutting the four borders uh, I have this width which is well there's a little bit chunk there so it's not quite wide enough that's that's a little bit chunked out too because okay so there we go so probably about that wide which means I need to fill in from here and then the length even like giving for the long armor the extra there's still a little bit extra not a ton extra there's actually probably not a lot extra of this to do binding I will use the green the green version of this one for binding but what I'm going to do with this plaid is frame it I will cut this in a big rectangle um, or I actually might just do the sides because it's long enough so I would just trim these little these little wings off on either side which will go in the cut into two and a half inch squares from my bin and then I will take two strips down each side of the of the black plaid and um, or gingham big 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 gingham and then I'll have a bunch of this left over so I can put it for a backing for something else or it might be enough even to do a border of something else so I will just do the two sides of this and I won't make it as long as this I, I will make it a little bit shorter because this is more than I need so that's what I will do for the backing so it'll mostly be this with two sides of the gingham 
Yes, very nice. I like that. Okay, now remember to download your July calendar because I show you what's going on, what are our daily projects, uh, what there's a project list on page two which says what's currently running, what's coming up, some future things, uh, things that I might be sewing on. <laughs> like you know that I've not been lately but I might uh, and the first one page has it day by day so you can get on all the fun sort of events and things that go on ah okay and you are also going to um, be working on which I didn't show you yet because I'm gonna do it tomorrow the starlight ran out of time today to do the starlight and so I would I'm just gonna shift that over to Saturday and we'll talk about it then all right, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.